Dad? Dad, wake up. Dad, it's 9.15. Can you do me, do me for, give me another 10 minutes and then really get on my case? Dad, you, you got to get up and you go to work. You got a family to support. You want me to help you out? You know what would help is if you could get the, get the coffee going, that would be a big help. Are you ill, Dad? Oh, man, I just don't feel like moving. Do you mind if I feel your, um, your forehead? What, what, do I feel feverish to you? Actually, you feel cold. Oh, oh. Dad, you died last night. <laughs> Ben, thank you so much. This is a great cup of coffee. Well, it's yesterday's. It was in the pot. I don't want you to make start making a habit of this. You think that I'm depending too heavily on the coffee? I mean, no, not the coffee. Oh, I'm... you don't want me to make a habit of sleeping late? Yeah, I mean, this could be the start of something really bad for you. Know you know what it's the start of? Maybe it's the start of me enjoying my, my life a little bit more. I hate to put a fire under your uh, fat ass, but... Uh... But get up and go to work and make money and then take care of me. Well, you know, maybe maybe the truth is that I am slowing down and that you're going to have to uh, pick up the slack, carry oh, the load Dad, a little bit. If I'm going to have to start being responsible for you, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to have to get you married off. Ben, who's going who's gonna to marry me, though? Hmm. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm fishing for compliments. Oh, and right. Who's going to marry a guy like me? How about the next person that rings the doorbell? Oh, you know, I like that game. I like that game. Remember we used to play the next person who gets off the elevator is going to be the tr your true love? Right. right. Yeah. You still in touch with him? <laughs> People in the Midwest are definitely friendly. You know, like where I'm from, you'd wave to a stranger. Mm -hmm. And what I've heard is the further you get from a big city, the nice people are. Well, just like to walk through North Dakota... Because I imagine I'd run into one guy who'd be like, Hello! How'd you like to make out with my daughter? Uh, sure. You can kiss my daughter and I'll wave to you. Maybe growing up in Indiana wasn't the most dynamic place, but mm -hmm. uh, I made practical use of my time. I wrote a lot of poetry. Here's one of the poems I wrote. It goes something like this. Help! Help! Get me the hell out of here! I like that. Thank you. What, what does your dad do? My dad originally wanted to become a priest, but I, I knew he didn't have the temperament for it. It would be like, <clears throat> never the father, the son of a bitch, damn it, pray. Mm-hmm. He's retired now. Yeah. <clears throat> That's my dad's cough, too. Mm -hmm. He actually gets it from smoking. My dad smokes constantly. Yeah. He refuses to go anywhere where he can't smoke. He could be at the gates of heaven. They'd be like, uh, sorry, Mr. Gaffigan, no smoking in heaven. My dad would just be like, <clears throat> Jim, tell your mother I'll be in purgatory. <clears throat> damn, son of a... So this is just a guy who's a fixture in your neighborhood, and you're not sure, and you're not sure that he's all there. I was talking to him recently, and halfway through the conversation, I realized he was drinking a cup of gravy. Mm. You know, I like gravy, but I've never considered it a beverage. Mm -hmm. If you're drinking gravy, you're probably not like a big health nut. You know? Wouldn't you love to be at the doctor's office with this guy? Hey, how you doing there, Mr. Jones? I got your cholesterol here. Uh, you're where your blood's not moving, right? Okay, this is kind of a weird question. You haven't been drinking gravy, have you? Mr. Godfrey, you're 25 minutes late. 25 minutes late? This has never happened to me before! Oh my God, I'm pregnant! You know, Jesus had a hard life. Mm -hmm. He really did because, you know, no matter what he did, he always had to be compared to his father. It just, it's kind of, it's like being Frank Sinatra Jr. You know, wherever Jesus would walk, everybody would go, Hi, Jesus, so how's your father? Your father's doing okay? That's nice. And he'd go, but I want to save all of your souls. And they go, yeah, that's very cute. So your father's doing good? Your father's all right, then. You send our best to your father. You know, Mother Teresa, she worked very hard, but she can't be declared a saint because she didn't actually work a miracle. Yeah. She saves starving children. She goes and, and, and watches by bedsides, but she can't become a saint unless she works an actual miracle. So it's kind of pathetic that in the last years she was desperate for a miracle, and instead of helping starving children, she would go, Hey, what's that behind your ear? Oh, look, it's a quarter. Yeah, let me take this starving child and saw him in half. 
Here's my lovely assistant, Denise, to show that there's no trick to this box. It's a solid box with solid chains on it. Hey, what card am I holding? Is it the Ace of Spades? Hello, I'm Robert Klein. I'm here to see Dr. Katz. Could you have a seat, please? Could you... Could you please... No. Stop it. Please. I'm sorry, Laura. Oh. It's just that I have to get ready for the doc, and they have enough Could I... on my mind. Um, um no. Laura! Laura, could, could you just please just I leave adore. me out of? I just, it's so commercial, the world, Dr. Katz. Do people call you Dr. Katz? Absolutely. But if you're more comfortable calling me, no, I, I think Dr. Katz is good. George Washington was a brave man, and, and he risked a lot. And, mm -hmm. and I know that he'd be proud to know that we celebrate his birthday every year with used car dealers. I'm Bill Duncan from Bill Duncan Dodge, and I got a George Watson birthday sale that'll knock your socks off. Right, George? That's right, Bill. And this poor actor, Schmageggy, getting 90 bucks with a rubber hatchet and a bad wig. That's right, Bill. I'm chopping down the prices on these beauties. It's a veritable cherry tree of savings. Laura? Ben. Yeah? Ben Cats. Yeah. Yeah. The younger cats. The, the annoying cats. Right, right. What do you want? He must have noticed how my father's lost, you know, that bounce in his step. I didn't know that he had one. Oh, he did, but it's gone. Oh. Yeah, now he just uh, sort of meanders. You know, wanders. Very sad. <sighs> You know, I think if my dad retires, I think, well, you know, I'll get him, I'll get him a boat. A boat? Well, he'll get himself a boat, but I'll name it. Mm. I love naming boats. I do it all the time, in my spare time. Spare time is a good boat name. Clever. You know what's also a good boat name? Kicking back. Mm -hmm. I have some trouble sleeping. I turn on the television. The only thing that can help me is watching QVC. Mm -hmm. Very lonely people calling at night. Hello? Yeah, my daughter collects China facsimiles of northeastern cities. She needs Youngstown, Ohio. I never heard of things that they sell. This woman has a big diamond-looking thing on there, but she didn't say it was a diamond. She said it was this beautiful diamond -ink ring surrounded by two gorgeous ruby rosas. And there are three spectacular heart-shaped sapphire edos. Yes, beautiful sapphire edos with the ruberosa and the diamondique. The Communist Manifesto is not a good boat name. Hmm. It's not even a boat name. It's the name of a book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I read. Hmm. You know another bad name for a boat? This piece of shit's going to sink. Well... You know what? Forget the boat. It's too difficult. Hmm. Waterlogged is pretty good. But yeah, forget it. Forget the boat. You know, I was doing a lot of thinking while you were gone. Mm -hmm. And um, you're on your way out. What are we going to do about it? What about having a woman registered nurse come in once a week and bathe us? <laughs> I think you're overreacting to, to my energy level, you know? I was kind of thinking about what kind of old man you're going to be. I think I'm going to be the kind of old man who can kick your ass until the day I die. <laughs> I mean... That's the kind of old man I'm going to be. You're certainly not going to be the distinguished gray type of guy. No, I don't think that's in the cards. I was thinking maybe you're going to be one of those old guys who, you know, uh, just walks around, bumps into things until you sit him down. That type of guy. I love those guys. Maybe the, you're the kind of guy who just smiles all the time and has food on his chin. Yeah, I don't think that's... You can't that's take not... your eyes off it. I'll tell you one thing, that at least I don't have an enlarged prostate like every other guy my age. Is that a uh, common affliction? Yes. Really? It's the acne of the middle-aged. The enlarged prostate? Yeah. What what does that do to you? Well, it puts pressure on your bladder. So you got to you have to pee a lot. Yeah, and it puts pressure on your other organs to compete. I mean, they all want to be bigger too. Yeah, and another thing that I'm grateful for, I never have had to use a deodorant in my entire life. <laughs> is that, is it just, that so? 
Yeah, I never did. My dad never did. We just don't we don't sweat in that way that that uh, has an odor. So you you do have an odor. I mean, maybe you didn't you didn't realize it. No, I see. I think. Oh Lord. Hello, Laura. Good to be here. I like wood. Wood. Good. Yeah. Um. Well, you know, I think I think a lot of this is all about body image and how you see yourself. I am bald, blind, and pale. I'm like a large recessive gene. It wouldn't surprise me if I woke up tomorrow with a tail. Have you seen the comic with the tail? He's delightful. Mm. People always know somebody that looks like me. You know, they're always like, "Hey, I know someone that looks like you." I never know what to say. You know, tell them hi. You know. Sure. The only advantage of wearing glasses is you can do that dramatic removal. My God. People always want to try my glasses on too. They're like, let me try on your glasses. Mm -hmm. That's rude. You know, I don't go to people with hair pieces. Hey, let me try on your wig. Let me sit in your wheelchair. Oh, my God. You are so crippled. Well, the media is drawn to any kind of celebrity. You know, we've even gotten to the point where we're interviewing the models. Mm -hmm. Dr. Katz, what do we expect to learn from a model? I put lipstick on my lips. Oh. Is there anything else? I walk that way when they tell me. We have so much to learn from you. You ever see one of these interviews? They're always like, uh, you're very beautiful. How'd you do that? My name's Kathy. Okay, maybe you didn't understand the question. Uh, you're going out with a guy in a band, right? Kathy. I go to the bathroom by myself. Hi, I'm Gilbert Gottfried to see Dr. Katz. Could you have a seat, please? Yeah, I, Gilbert Gottfried. I heard you. Here, here, hey, do you like impressions? No. You know, oh, good, good, good. Here, here, watch this. Jackie Gleason in Casablanca. You're getting on that plane with Vic Laszlo. Oh, you're getting on that plane, all right. As I know that you know that I know that you're getting on that plane. You know, one time uh, Hitler was making a big speech. And afterwards, when he got off stage, Napoleon came up to him and said, Hey, uh, you know that bit you do about taking over the world? Mm -hmm. And he goes, yeah. And he goes, well, that's my bit. And he goes, what do you mean it's your bit? I wrote that bit. And Napoleon says, no, no, that whole thing, I will be a leader. I will take over the whole world. I was doing that years ago. And he goes, don't tell me. I don't have to take your stuff. I write my own stuff. I don't need your material. And then they finally worked something out where Hitler said, well, look, if we're ever working in the same town, we won't both do the taking over the world bit. I mean, Gilbert, I'm, the, I'm glad you're sharing this stuff with me, but I feel like we're just postponing the, the very thing that it is that you want to talk to me about. Okay. You know, the, there's nothing that you can't say in this room. Nothing will leave this room. It's called patient confidentiality. But what if I say something particularly interesting? See, this is what bothers me. Nothing I say can leave this room. But what if I say something that's really interesting, that's really like a great quote, and then I'll know it just dies in this room? Well, if it's something really great. Do you have any recurring dreams? Unfortunately, this is something I wanted to talk to you about. My dreams have no symbolism. I want some symbolism in my... Everyone else has symbolism in their dreams. Everyone else has these dreams where all of a sudden there's a train conductor, but he comes out of a cake, and the cake is really like this girl I used to go out with, but the girl I used to go out with is actually my father. Me, I have these dreams where I'm walking down the street, and it's just a street. Freud said that it's the, it's the dream... He said this to you personally? I didn't think the two of you knew each other. He said it's the, it's the dreamer. But why was he speaking like you speak? Him being Freud, wouldn't he speak with a German accent? Well, this is years ago. Oh, so he didn't have the German accent back then. Freud said that it's the dreamer, not the dream. Well, did you, did you turn to Freud? Did you take him aside at one point and say, 
What the hell are you talking about? Okay, let's try something else. Let's let's try the word association thing. I'll say a word, and you say whatever pops into your head. A uh, butterfly. No, I don't think you don't quite quite get it. I'm gonna say grasshopper. Okay, well let's fountain pen. I see you're you're way ahead of me. This is at a whole different level. Of... Shower curtain. I think you win this round. Yamaka. Comment je la fonction, je la vision. Oh, bon, bon. Qu'est-ce <laughs> <laughs> uh, que c'est? Stanley, let me ask you something. Yeah, what? You ever think about hanging it up, retiring, calling it quits, just... Yeah, sure, yeah, I think about that. Kicking back and opening up a cold brew and... This is a new side of cats. Yeah. What the hell is he talking about? You know, I'll tell you why I'm asking you this, is because I feel like I'm, physically I'm slowing down. And Ben s seems to think that the handwriting is on the wall. What do the handwriting on the wall say? He thinks that I should start phasing out of my work life and into my retirement life. Nah. Why do you listen to him? I don't know, because he's home? What am I... <laughs> about how I would like to die. Uh-huh. Because I, I do think about my own mortality quite a bit lately. Although, you know, there is a history of longevity in our family. My maternal grandfather lived to be 103. Every day he ate an entire raw onion and he smoked a cigar. 103 years old. You, you know what his dying words were? What? Nobody knows. I couldn't get near the guy. <laughs> but still, I worry about death. Because it's, you know, it's waiting there patiently for all of us. So you're saying I'm going to die? <laughs> well, when you put it like that, it sounds bleak. No, Dad, we're never going to die. That's for other people. We're the Katzes. We live forever. Yeah, we're... Well, there was, there's been a lot of death in the family lately, but I don't think that reflects. Let's talk about something a little less morbid. Yeah. How's that tumor? <laughs> What's all this stuff here, Ben? Well, I got a surprise for you. Is the I guess surprise... I should have wrapped it. Well, you know what gives it away is the easel and the paints. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So you knew what it was right Immediately. away. Immediately. I mean, I'm still surprised to see it in my home. Oh, well, that's, then that works out. Yeah. In a small way. So why the paints? You see, this is what I thought, Dad. Yeah. I mm -hmm. uh, decided to, uh, to get you a hobby that's going to bring you through your old age. Uh, you know, I, it's very sweet the way you're thinking, Ben. But it's a little misguided because you can't, you can't impose a hobby on somebody. It has to come from them. Well, you know, sometimes... You know, I have no desire to paint anything. Well, now you don't, but if you started, I, I think... I would like to put some tape over your mouth, though. That's art, uh, if you display it. I don't, have the, I don't have the hand-eye coordination for painting. Well, you should give it a try. And also, I'm colorblind. Well, I only bought red. Oh. Is that red? Dad. Yes. You're up early. Well. I thought things were changing. Time waits for no man. Um, what does that mean? It means I like to get up. I like to seize the bull by the horns. Well, you know, it's, it's starting to sound like the old you. I'm starting to feel like the old me. Dad. You, you, you painted something. Yes. Last night. Yes. Wow. What do you think? I, uh, I, uh, that's, um. You know, it's a work in progress. I'm not done yet. Yeah. But, I mean, you gotta, obviously, I gotta, uh. I gotta sign it. <laughs> Doctor, this, this guy comes up to me and he says, Hey man, you want to buy a watch? I said, no, I don't want to buy a watch, especially at a urinal. Now this is my time with myself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe unconsciously I'll, I'll aim at a, at a wad of paper in the urinal or a cigarette butt, try to separate it from the filter, pretend it's a Nazi installation. Right. You know, like a command decision, you know, I'm afraid the photos from Bitburg were bad, sir. We'll have to go back and hit it again, you know. Right. So is that, uh, is that your new watch? There are a number of things I like about being Jewish. One is we bury quickly. Right. You know, I mean, a, a Jew dies, zoom, into the ground immediately. A Jew dies at noon, call the relatives in Phoenix, the funerals at two. Gentiles, they have a wake, four days, five days, eight shows a day, like vaudeville. It's very uncomfortable for the family. Mm. Jews bury so quickly that old Jewish people are afraid to take a nap 
lest they be mistaken for dead. Who was the guy who was able to sell Hogan's Heroes to a network? I mean, who was able to walk into a network one day and go, okay, here's the idea. A group of soldiers held in a Nazi prison camp. It's a comedy! Hmm, that's interesting. Tell me more. Well, okay, you see, these soldiers are in prison by the Nazis behind barbed wire, and if they try to escape, they'll be shot. I love it. It's a laugh riot. Hmm. Excuse me for being too pushy, but can you change your facial expression? Oh. Why are you just sitting there with one facial expression? Please change your yeah. facial expression. Smile, yeah. frown, you do know something, music. squint, okay, but you know. something. Just okay, change time. your facial expression. See this? I want this, you to is... change your, your stereo. I have this fantasy when I retire that you and I are going to get a, a mobile home. Mm -hmm. And just see this great country of ours. Like an RV? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But, you know, with a toilet, with a shower. Oh, no. Forget that. We do it right. We do it the old way. What's that, stagecoach? <laughs> Bareback. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, Dad, we can take Mexico again. Mm -hmm.